Now let's get something straight. Can gin and tonics are great. They don't need mixing if you haven't got time to mix. I've already done that hard work for you. Uh, you can shove it in a bag, take it to a picnic or a festival or a day trip to the beach and not have to worry about taking glassware and ice and all that sort of thing with you. They can be kept cold in the fridge, so don't need pouring over ice to keep them cold in the first place. And best of all is they're really nice and fizzy. And that's because in a can gin and tonic, the canner is carbonating both the gin and the tonic water. If you think about it, in a normal gin and tonic, your gin's flat, and so that's diluting some of your fizz. But there is one big problem with canned gin and tonics. No one's making them at the right strength. Let's rewind a little bit. A classic gin and tonic is made from 25 to 50 milliliters of gin, typically. Around about 150 milliliters of tonic, give or take, up or down. And about 30 milliliters of dilution. So this results in a drink of a liquid volume of around 200 to 230 milliliters. Now I like my gin and tonics mixed at a ratio of around about three to one. So what that means is three parts tonic to one part gin plus the dilution. In practice, that generally means about 50 milliliters of gin, 150 milliliters of tonic water, which is the size of one of these cans here, and then about 30 ml of dilution. Now, do the maths, the ABV, the alcohol content of that gin and tonic at a three to one ratio, sits somewhere around 13%, which incidentally is about the same as a glass of wine. There's probably not an accident that I sit around that ratio since I like my gin and tonics to be roughly wine strength. That said, I probably drink gin and tonics a little bit stronger than most people. So let's do the maths on a 25 ml serve. Here we have the same 150 milliliters of tonic water mixed with 25 milliliters of gin, around 30 milliliters of dilution from ice, and we end up with a drink that's 200 milliliters in size and 7.5% ABV. Now I think most folks would consider a six to one ratio gin and tonic at only 7.5% ABV to be very much on the weaker end of the scale as far as gin and tonics go. And yet 7.5% ABV is higher strength than any canned gin and tonic that I can find doing a quick Google search of what's available in the UK. In fact, most canned gin and tonics in the UK sit at around five or 6% ABV, with some as low as 4% ABV. With these drinks, you're getting a 250 ml serve containing roughly 30 ml of gin and 220 ml of tonic water. And that's a ratio of 7.3 to one tonic to gin. Why are the gin companies doing this to us? Where are the double measure cans at 13 or 14% ABV? Or even 10% ABV? Or even 8% ABV? Answers on a postcard. Don't forget to like and subscribe.